who gives the results of scientific experiments and tests? Is it human beings or is it God? Neither. You put it through a logic gate. If A, then B is your alternative hypothesis. Proven in both instances. Jaron simply doesn't understand the logic behind the empirical method. And when he saw the paper floating, was that evidence for him to change his mind? We haven't got to that yet. Let's let's move no, on. No, no, I bit. know. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Go well, on. in essence, we're covering the fact that we've got a reification fallacy at this stage. What what Jaron's doing is he's saying, science doesn't say they prove things. Listen to these men throw the method of science under the bus by saying it doesn't prove things. Yet yeah, that's what men say. Science is a method of establishing cause and effect through systematic experimentation based on a hypothesis. That's not what men say. But you've been duped by what men say, Jaron, when there's an empirical method available. And you're telling us that science says it doesn't prove things. All oh, right, is this Mr. Science? No, it isn't. It's a reification fallacy. I bet the sources he drug well, up are the same ones that QE pointed out didn't have any scientific hypothesis to precisely. back their assertions. That, that's why I kept long, leaving long pauses. I was hoping someone would get there. Exactly. Who are the people saying science doesn't prove things? Oh, well, shockingly, they're the per people, same exact people that lied to you about being on a ball and claim that they had experiments and science. But their science, which has no empirical validity behind it, doesn't prove anything. Yeah, that's because it isn't science. More accurately, what they should say is, we don't have any science. We say we've got it, ergo pseudoscience, but our pseudoscience doesn't prove anything. Science, on the other hand, absolutely does. They just didn't have any and need to throw it under the bus. So when their story changes, which science does not, they can have an excuse for doing so. I think it's a... I mean, that's why I was trying to make the argument that it's a algorithm so to speak it's either a true or false statement either your hypothesis was proven true or your hypothesis was true, proven false and you can actually even do uh conditions you know like the the seawater or the water thing you know it boils at 100 degrees at sea level 200 degrees of sea level whatever it is but the qualifier if you change that one parameter then the statement would become false which means if you're at a higher altitude it would be less to, you know, maybe 180 degrees it'll boil at, but the but there's a so it, the certain parameters will change it whether the statement is true or false depending on the parameters. No, that's not true in science, though, is it? Because in science, you're only varying one thing, the independent variable. Everything else is held constant. So if you say, well, if you change the McAlts, well, then you're not doing an experiment. You're not following the method. The method's got that built in to stop that from happening. No, no, I'm just saying, like, if you say water boils at 200 degrees, and that's all you say, then you show that it boils at 180 degrees at a different altitude, whatever. That's what I'm saying, and that your statement would be false in that in that specific category. But, yeah, if you hold things constant, and you change one parameter, then, yeah, you're proving your hypothesis is either true or false. Okay. I mean, you can give the full disclaimed formulated hypothesis with controls. You can say as a result of your supposition, of course, that water will boil as a direct consequence of heat at 100 degrees centigrade at sea level or 14.7 PSI. Well, that just states the controls. But at 14.7 PSI or at atmospheric sea level, it's just declaring that you're not going to vary anything beyond what you've stated as your independent variable. That's why in a bone bo bare bones form, you don't have to state the control variables. What are you varying? x so what you're not varying everything that isn't x so is varying the altitude heat well you're trying to find out if heat causes the water to boil so are you going to vary altitude well you've got two independent variables that's a contradiction in terms and not following the method move on a little bit but they don't they don't even say it because anybody in their right mind is smart enough to go nope that doesn't make any sense how would science prove anything because in order to prove something you have to have all possible 
scenarios included. So I don't care what test you do. Number one, who gives the results of scientific experiments and tests? Is it human beings or is it God? Neither. You put it through a logic gate. If A, then B is your alternative hypothesis. If A, A being your presumption of cause, and B being the effect that you are studying, then if A, then B is your supposition that you vary A and it causes B. Now, you also have the contrapositive in a hypothesis if you're following the method, which is a null hypothesis. And the null has the complete opposite. If A, the thing that you're going to vary to hopefully cause the effect you're studying, not B. Now, those two statements are mutually exclusive. Both cannot simultaneously exist together at the same time. A cannot both cause B and not cause B at the same time. Ergo, upon variation of A, it will either cause the effect or not cause the effect. Only one of those two things can happen. Now, if you perform the method and do the experiment and vary your assumed cause, at that point, only one outcome will have a tick next to it. But the tick next to it is proving that statement and one or other will be proven. Either A will cause the effect you're studying, in which case tick proven A causes B. Or you validate your all null hypothesis. A does not cause B. Tick proven in both instances. Jaron simply doesn't understand the logic behind the empirical method. Now, regardless of who reports this outcome, both outcomes cannot simultaneously be true. So there's no, well, this person's reporting that A caused B, and this other person's reporting that A didn't cause B. The two are mutually exclusive and cannot both exist at the same time. It's a violation of the law of non-contradiction. It's a contradiction to assert that it both causes something and doesn't cause something. It makes absolutely no difference who reports it or how they report it unless they lie. But the outcome of the method, the science bit, is empirical.